All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about this NXT show with the uh, invasion of the WWE free agents. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. What an episode of NXT we had last night, including Gigi Dolan and JC Jane in a weaponized cage match, which was, in fact, a cage match with weapons in it, which I think is every cage match, right? Pretty much. Well, it was, uh, they worked hard. It was sloppy. Do you remember when uh, when JC killed Gigi with that super kick against the door? Yes. Well, she uh, had her in the corner, and uh, she was leaning against a trash can, and man, she super kicked her face off her face again. And I was just watching this going, how does this happen twice? And I watched it, and uh, as a guy who threw a super kick in every single solitary match he ever did in his life, when you throw a super kick, what you have to do is look at your target. Because, you know, if you look away too early and you can't see your target, how can you properly throw a super kick and not kick them? She looks away as she's throwing the kick. Like, I know if you look at pictures of Shawn Michaels, you know, he's, you know, it looks like he's looking away, but that's after the kick has landed. You don't look away until after you, you hit the kick. So anyway, she kicked her head off and then uh, ended up going through a table at the end. Gigi gave her a choke slam off the top, pinned her, and that was that. More kids need to study Chris Adams. More kids need to study Shawn Michaels, but actually study him. You know what I'm saying? I think people watch the matches, but they don't really get what's going on. Like, watch what he's doing, dude. That guy, I heard from people that wrestled Shawn Michaels. They're like, this guy was the smoothest, lightest, easiest guy you ever saw. He wasn't in there kicking dudes' heads off. The super kick. And Wes Lee did a promo. This character, Wes Lee. So he had a friend, Tyler. And... Wes was going to defend the title against anybody. Anybody. He, ten guys if they wanted to. Remember that one? He goes, I'll take all ten guys. Huh. And then and they were like, well, we can't have you face ten, but we'll give you five. Remember that? Yes, well, but this is where the, that's where the character flaw came in. Because remember, he didn't want Axiom. It was, everybody else well, that was, was also fine, weird. but not Axiom. So then Tyler, you know, he goes, I want a shot. And now Wes is just like, uh, I can't believe you betrayed me. I thought you were my friend. I'm like, what a jerk. So then they do the three-way. There are so many universes that actually live inside the Full Sail universe. It is absolutely amazing. And all of them were on display last night. Every single last one of them. They do a three-way. Wes wins. And then Tyler shows up here as Schism is trying to go after Wes. And, you know, they run off the heels. The heels slink off. And Tyler says, I, I told you, it was just... In the spirit of competition. And so now that Wes has beaten him, he's like, thanks, brother. Fist bumps him. I'm like, would you really be doing that fist bump, brother, if he would have beaten you? Probably not. You'd be crying about it right now. You know, sometimes when you have a character and somebody writes something for you and it makes your character look like an idiot, you should say, no, wait a second. I'm not doing this. Can we find a different way to do this? This is ridiculous. Tony D was having his mug shot taken. That was ridiculous. So, for those of you that uh, Mike knows all about mug shots, for those of it's you true. that it's done, uh, they don't happen that way, you know, it doesn't happen, Mike. It's, uh, what doesn't happen is you get arrested, and then it takes a week to get to the place where you're going to get your mug shot taken. Was it on Jupiter? How long does it take to get there? That's what was ridiculous. Not the fact that he had a mug shot and was taken all wacky. Then Gallus is backstage. <laughs> Stax shows That's up. That's the part of the Get show. This. That's gonna no, it's better. Out. Get this. Stax goes up to Gallus, and he accuses them of ratting on Tony D. Snitches get stitches, he says. He attacks them. There's a beating, and then, you know, they, they do that. But the, the point, if you guys don't get it, is that Tony D is a horrible criminal who is a babyface, and... Gallus 
because they literally reported a crime are heels. That's what's happening here. No. Not yes. Necessarily. Yes, that's they what's just, happening. No, you. we don't know yet if they are trying to frame him with something. Obviously, Tony D. Frame him? Got his- Did you watch the show? They had video of it. They were showing Tony D. video of his crime. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's kind of blurry. Yeah. Come on. Was. Jiminy was. Christmas. This was ridiculous. Then Mello and Trick come out for a victory promo. So if you missed the pay-per-view, there's now a new crew, which is the NXT version of the AW Oddities. It is Noam Dar, Oro Mensa, Lash Legend, and Miss Jackson. <laughs> they are now a unit, and uh, they they set up a uh, title match. And what a unit they are, too. Oh, they are. Oh, are they ever. <laughs> it is going to be Mello versus uh, no- Norm, Dor Norm Dor for the title in the main event. And then we had a... Uh, Absolutely, completely, totally campy, Saved by the Bell segment with the women backstage, where Cora is saying, I got headbutted in the match last week. I was blinded. If that hadn't happened, I would have gone to Battleground and won the title. It's like the glow locker this room from This should have been day. all about me. <laughs> I deserve to be the champion. And then Ivy Nile, who, to be fair, in the past has been somewhat wooden. She walks up, and she's a total human. She just goes, dude, we all get hurt. Suck it up. Get over it. You lost. And Cora says, well, your your buddy's lost on Saturday. Where were you? And Ivy says, you don't hear us complaining about it. She walks out. And Cora says, I'm not scared of her. Reggie met with Axiom. As God is my witness is what happened, okay? Reggie says... Axiom, yes, my name is Reggie, but growing up, my people called me Scripps. Axiom says, your people, what does that mean? Like your family? And Reggie says, definitely not my family. But that's irrelevant. You unmasked me, you opened my eyes, and I owe it to you. And he walks off, and Axiom and myself are completely confused. Is he from another planet? What is his storyline? Tyler Bate and Wes Lee versus the Schism. Ali walked out in this match. And because he's from the main roster, I think he might have got a bigger pop than when he was in Saudi Arabia. And he came down to do commentary. And uh, Tyler hit the Tyler, Tyler Driver 97. The Tyler, the, I like Yeah, it. the pin. It's like a chandelier. And then Ivy hit the ring, went after Ava. Creed's went down. Brawl broke out. Gacy hit the ring. Ali left the announce table, beat his ass. Loud Ali chance. So apparently we've got a six-man with Ali coming up here soon. We have dropped, but I am going to uh, barrel on through this as uh, Byline tries to reconnect me. Hopefully Dom knows to uh, do what he does as a producer. Ivy Nile hit the ring, as I noted, and we had a schmoz with the schism and the dyad. Who are the schism? You got that, everybody? I'm trying to communicate with Dom here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell him, this is how you solve all problems, everybody. No. How's that? Reboot. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. We're back. Okay. So now Gulak and Charlie Dempsey have either taken over or they're guest trainers at Chase U. And uh, Thea's there, and she tells Duke, I'm not weak. I want to prove it. So Wait, hold on. Hold on. You are not really giving this the setup I'm that not, it needs to. I'm not. Because they are in the ring. You know, with Charlie Dempsey and Gulak, and Gulak is locking up with somebody, and the camera pans over just this much, where Thea is against the ropes, and Duke is right there, and Duke is saying, you know, you don't have to take this course. I mean, I could just give you a pass for it, which, again, maybe we should have some backstory on what the hell is actually going on. We don't know what's going on. But the best part is they're this far away screaming. He is screaming. Yet anybody in the ring, they don't hear him. We had Tiffany come out to celebrate her title win. I know you're a big fan of Tiffany. Yes. I think she's going to be a main roster star at some point. Absolutely. But at this point, she is 100% 
playing professional wrestler. There is nothing about this character that feels anything authentic. She's doing every, you know, pretty blonde girl entitled character trope you've ever seen. And uh, long story short, there's going to be a battle royal next week to determine her first challenger. Hey, she looked look, really nervous out there. Let me tell you something. It's still better than what they've done to Roxanne, who week after week after week is like, again, just regress. And look, they're both doing the jobs they want them to do. Every Almost every woman in WWE, to me, if you let them up to their own devices, things would be a little bit different there. And again, Roxanne's a great example. They are cartooning. Everybody on this show is a cartoon. Everybody's a cartoon. Lenny says, does WWE have any authentic folks? Lenny, I know you don't watch the show, but there are tons, tons. And you realize that when you watch Tiffany. We had Lash Oro and Miss Jackson <laughs> but compare her to, meeting again, with Trick in the back. so many of these other characters. I know. What's the difference? I got to keep moving or we're not going to get done. Go ahead. Danny Palmer is in the ring. Oh Speaking my God. of inauthentic, oh my God. I refuse to leave this ring until I find out who the mystery attacker is. She oh has God. beat up all my friends. I won't leave. And then the attacker appears. It is Blair Davenport. Talk about authentic. She beat the heck out of this lady. Fans chant, welcome back. Stacks and Joe Coffee. Match is fine. And uh, good to the last drop. Joe Coffee won. Then we had a segment with Mr. Stone and Von Wagner oh, where uh, Mr. Stone says, dude, you didn't need to put that guy through the table last week. And Wagner says, that guy had been calling me a freak. He'd been a jerk for weeks. And Stone says, listen, you're going to get suspended. You're going to lose your free agency. Because he was disqualified. Listen, you have big time anger management issues. If you're not going to listen to me, you should listen to a therapist. And Von goes, what's a therapist going to do other than take my money? And Stone says, forget the money. I will pay for it. And Von Wagner Thinks about it and says, I'll, I'll consider it. We had an awesome Ilya Dragunov Dijak promo package, which I could have watched just for two full hours and been delighted. Ivy Nile beat Cora Jade after interference from Ava. Uh, the match was fine. Ivy, at this point, is now looking like a way better worker than Cora, and it hasn't taken that long. She looked good in this match, but she was beaten. And so they do the challenge for uh, Ivy and Ava next week. You want to talk about two people that are authentic characters? Hank yeah. and Tank. Oh, my God. They're the best, these two guys. They're an incredible duo. And they're all happy they beat each other up because now they're like this. And then Edris and, uh, and uh, Malik come up, and they want to prove they're like this, but they fail miserably. So then Edris goes, or uh, I'm sorry, Malik goes, Maybe we should fight each other so we can be a tighter team. Edris wants nothing to do with that, but it looks like it might be happening. And then, excellent main event, Carmelo Hayes and Noam Dar for the NXT title. Everybody's out there. Trick and Oro, they get an argument. Trick gets ejected. The fans are upset. Miss Jackson and Lash interfere. Aura crotches Carmelo. Dragon Lee and Nathan Frazier come down. They take out Oro. Carmelo hits the big dive off the post onto the heels. Flying leg drop for the pin. And then after retaining his title, who should make his return but the lone wolf himself, Baron Corbin. On your show. On my show. Hey, he was awesome the last time he was there. Before he became a constable. You can also find me at Vincent Verhey on Cameo. Oh, my God. I will send you a happy birthday wish. I will send you a happy anniversary wish. Granny, you ever thought about being on Cameo? What is it? My computer, my front page is uh, uh, Microsoft. And I g go through there and see all kinds of lies and stuff like that. And here you are. You're doing a commercial. And then you had me on there when I was ranting about WrestleMania. Did you get my permission? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, what? Just, what? Just stop You're for a second. Your front page is Microsoft. I yeah. guess. I don't even know what that means. Your front page is Microsoft. What do you mean you go through there and see all the lies? What does that mean? Well, they have a whole bunch of stuff, you know, about this and that and this and that, you know, all kinds like of news. Like the news? News? I don't post the videos. I don't edit the videos. If you saw some video or some commercial, I have no idea what it is or where it came from or who edited it together. I'm sure it was someone from the site. It's not, no, Tony, it's not Tony and it's not Dave and it's not me. And it's not Vinny's busy doing cameos. That's right. 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.